first meeting of Kahai provided an incredible interest uh, of different delegations and it serves as an indicator of the importance of issues that the task group, the committee, is tasked to do. We took stock of positions, opinions and interventions and we tried to include the multi-stakeholder approach which is important because it's not only member states that are relevant, it's also civil society, corporations and other international organizations. The task of CAHAI in the first level is to provide a feasibility study for the legal framework and the elements of such a framework for design, development and application of artificial intelligence in terms of human rights, rule of law and democracy. And in order to do this, we need to structure CAHAI's work efficiently and effectively. It's a very wide topic, so we need to separate science fiction from facts and real issues and effects. We need to also prevent duplication of work by other organizations and we need to achieve operational results. We will now prepare a roadmap and a preliminary table of content for the upcoming work. First, we need to identify the relevant effects on human rights. We also need to do legal mapping to prevent duplication. We will take into account various binding and non-binding legal materials, but also academic work. And finally, we also need to identify suitable and possible mechanisms to implement our work. The main responsibility for providing an environment that effectively allows enjoyment and protection of human rights, of course, rests on the governments. However, we must not forget that most development is currently being done by multinational corporations. Digital technology allows global effects at scale and at micro levels of individual users, customers, citizens. It also creates direct and indirect effects, short-term and long-term effects on communities. A number of ethical guidelines, standards and recommendations have been issued in recent past, but they are all non-binding. Current development relies on self-regulation, and self-regulation depends on trust. Trust in recent times has been breached a number of times. We need to move forward to binding mechanisms which would take into account both design, development and deployment and application of artificial intelligence systems. By this, we would address not only regulation and mechanisms for enforcement of sectoral standards, but we also must pr promote positive adaptation to the new technological revolution. Artificial intelligence holds great potential for positive development of the human society. At the same time, it can also bring and create new dangers. The efficiency that it brings must be taken into uh, consideration together with the principle of proportionality. For example, we have artificial intelligence based facial recognition systems that can increase the security of the citizens. At the same time, they could be used as tools for a postmodern surveillance state and at the same time could significantly negatively affect freedoms of opinion, freedoms of association, assembly and so on. It's important that states, as guarantors of human rights, consider the principle of proportionality when employing new systems, new technologies, and it's the role of the Council of Europe to monitor such uh, developments. Council of Europe has, in the past, also already created a body of work that contributes to the work of nation states in relation to modern technologies. Council of Europe has developed the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime, it has developed the Data Protection Convention and work toward a legal framework that would address the challenges posed by artificial intelligence is just the next step in the long path behind and before us.